Not even one month ago, the Vodonianskas were a very happy family. They lived near the sea in Mariupol. Today, Svetlana bears the scars of war. Their car crashed as they fled the city last week, a journey which began with a desperate escape from their own neighborhood. As soon as we left home, she told me, the rockets started to explode around us, hitting the buildings, and power lines fell down across the road in front of us. I shouted at my kids, she said, don't look out of the windows, I didn't want them to see the corpses in the street. A month ago, Svetlana's husband, Roman, had a job as a plumber. She had a business baking cakes. Now they're experts on Russian weapons. Svetlana mimics the sound of the Grad missiles which began the assault. Then there are the cluster bombs, which come down on little parachutes and explode in the air. And the vacuum bombs, which sent clouds of fire through their streets. The smiles have fallen from the children's faces. One month ago, Svetlana and Roman's eldest, Diana, was studying for her high school diploma. Now my school isn't there anymore, she says. Atrocity is not a strong enough word for what's happened to my city. The attack on that city goes on. The Ukrainian government rejected an ultimatum from the Russians, issued to try to force the surrender of Mariupol. The Russians, says Roman, have never accepted our sovereignty. They have always, he says, regarded us as their colony. And from his traumatized family, there is defiance. I believe in our soldiers, says Svetlana. They will save our city and we will return. We will repair, she said, what has been broken. Geraint Vincent, News at 10, Western Ukraine.